Fuck you. Just going to make sure no stingers long, long in there. Also a possibility that the two videos that I'm doing, um, I might be at an angle. I've just noticed that the camera's sunk on one side a little bit, so uh, if it is, I'm sorry about that. What uh, for brought today? Well, I, I haven't brought all the mini axes I'm going to bring. I'll do them in another video, but um, I did uh, when I showed the beauty axe in, in, I think it was in my last video. I did say I had a larger bearded accent. I need sharp me. I had to bid on this and it's from from Europe and it actually has a, a maker's mark on it. Um, I could have been diddled, it's said to be a, an original, but um, Definitely looks as if it's been used and bashed about a bit. I need to get a big pickaxe type on for, for this thing because believe me, I'm having a job holding that out. That is a weight, that is. I've not got small hands, so if you look at that compared to my hand, yeah, very large hands. Big size is one of the largest sizes you can get, so. What else have we got? Bag of knives. Now, I'm not really into a lot of these uh, woodcraft type knives. Um, and here comes the rain again. Okay. Uh, let me just cover the camera up before we get to wet. <sighs> it's going to be one of them days, I think. Anyway. Like I say, I'm not uh, really into uh, the woodcraft knives very much, but this is one I did get uh, a while ago. And I'm just show it to you. It's stainless steel. I don't know if the light's catching this wood. Properly, and it's hard to see at this angle, but full tank as you can see. It's made by a company called Whitby. There is the name Whitby. They make a lot of knives, they sell other people's knives too. But um, this is a superb edge on the blade, as you can see. It's traditional woodcraft size and style and uh, it's just that one side of this wood, um, I don't know if it's ma mahogany or what this, but uh, it actually is three dimensional at this point here. It's almost looking like looking at a tiger eye stone. Now I don't know if this is coming up on camera, I hope it is. But, um, Hope the light catches its rise. A beautiful piece of wood, a beautiful plated knife, a decent uh, woodcraft knife. And like I said, I don't normally bother with the woodcraft type knives because, to be honest, they look too much like kitchen knives. Um, I did a lot of um, chefing when I was younger and I got a bit bored with it. Especially the knives, I thought were very mundane, uh, the Sabatier knives and such like. But anyway, it's a, a little favourite. I'll never buy another one, I don't think. But um, you just add one to your collection. Most of my knives are about collecting. Um, a lot of them are usable, probably won't get used. They would just be stored as collectors' items. Um, The main bulk of to, um, today's are they are Viking. <laughs> somebody stuck it piss out of the mouth. They are Viking based knives, and a couple of them were actually done by a group that does the oh, 
I wouldn't so much say the reenactment as they live it. Uh, they have a, uh, a place where you know they have the actual huts and halls and um, all the equipment, the clothing. So I suppose it's part of the way of life for them as well. But um, they also, I'm trying to think of the name of the company and I can't think of it. Um, if it comes to me, but get dressed for battle and they actually make knives and sell them as well and swords and shields and they sell the clothing as well um, and I got a couple of uh, knives off them and I've also a couple of other made knives as well which um, I'll tell you about in a minute and tell you the difference right so anyway as you can see by the style of that sheath very simple made sheath and this is traditional how it would have been made a bit of leather stitched round and a bit of a, a belt tag on and that's it the oil that goes onto these blades um, makes them stick in the sheath a little bit um, so that's, that's good I'm doing a video um, and as you can see this is a traditional made Viking knife and this type of knife was find, found in the burial ground of a Viking chieftain a Viking chieftain uh, in Britain and they've been found across Middle East Europe as well not Middle East, uh, Daneland so you can see that is one of the knives this is another one You can see a bit of the colouring that's come from the tempering of the blades. They were made fresh, they're not off the shelf, they're made to order. And as you can see, a traditional style Viking type knife. And again, the same simple stitching, heavy duty leather held on your belt. These were a working tool as well as a fighting tool. Now, these were made by people who uh, the crafts have been handed down through the ages. We have a couple of copy style ones now, di slightly different. And these were made by the Chinese. And I got them off AliExpress. And they were a similar price to those. And the bloody god. They are. Actually, no, this was not made in China. This was made... This is European. Anyway, I don't want to drag this out. I love the, the style. Simple blacksmithing style of knife. There's a serial number on there. There is an, a name on there, but I can't see it too well with these glasses. Ouch. Super sharp. Nice blade. I'm presuming stainless steel, as you can see a bit of rust in the spiralling on the, where the handle wasn't oiled and the rest is got a fine film on it. So I'll have to address that situation. Um, I intend to try and make some of these as soon as I get my workshop together. Uh, so that's one of those. Um, it has a press stud on it, which isn't traditional, but the sheath, as you can see, simple leather sheath stitching such like, but it's got a press stud on the front, which is obviously quite modern. Here's another version of that with a slightly thicker style. Uh, this has got Frost USA printed on it. Whether it is Frost USA or not, I don't know, but I actually got it through a Chinese sales site. And again, it's quality. It is quality steel. It's not shit. A lot of people go, oh, Chinese shirt, it's not. And again, the same sort of um, sheath for it. And it's a press stud fastening, but yeah, that's to your advantage. Because on your belt, again, working, uh, hunting type knife. And here's another version of it. I'm not too happy about the handle on this one because of the shape of it, but as you can see. 
nice and sharp on the edges. You could skim with this, but I would think that this was built for one thing. It's a defensive knife. Lovely, robust, solid sheath. Again with the press stuck, nice and safe. None of them uh, will fall out. None of them have that looseness that uh, uh, some of the knives have had made by British companies. Um, I'll just tell you something about uh, the Chinese. Over the last 20 years, they have bought up all the scrap steel in America, Britain, Germany and most of the best parts of Europe and they've been doing this over 20 years. You'll notice that scrap is either harder to get hold of in your own country or it's gone a lot dearer to go to your scrap yard and buy things. This is because the Chinese have bought all this steel, good steel, to make these blades from. So when people are saying Chinese crap, you know, we're actually using good quality metals to make them with. And to me, they're doing a damn good job. I'm not a metallurgist, but yeah, I can't see any difference between the uh, two Viking knives that were made in this country by, by Smiths and Chinese ones. Um, strength, they're not, they're not going to bend, they're not going to snap, they'll do any job that you want them to. So, before people, I, I know people like to shop local, shop at home, uh, support the country, but when your own country has been stupid about it, um, the way it looks after its own economy, then they can't moan when you have to when you have to start going abroad to get cheaper stuff. It's not just that they pay the Chinese cheaper wages; they bought all that scrap at cheap prices when they could. And now scraps high because it's all been sold away. Um, so that's it for the moment. Uh, then with my Viking knives and of course my bearded Viking axe. Which needs some work doing on it to bring it up to a kind of sharpness. But, um, and an angle on it. Once that's swung, there's going to be like a sledgehammer. You, it's not somebody going to be able to put the brakes on. Once you've swung this thing, it's carried on going, but it's not stopping. Unless it hits something just as solid. So, there we have it. Second video, and I'm tying up there. I'm attracting a lot of attention now. There's a big crowd stood over there watching me. Um, you might not see me, but I am a very introvert person, really. Um, until the next video. Catch you soon. See you for now.